checking this piece of fabric that I have here to see if I could make curtains and if this is the right thickness. I just want something sort of classic and not patterned or coloured. So I'm just trying to see what it looks like in the light, what it would be like if there is a, you see if we have toiletries or something behind it. Well, you don't quite get the <laughs> you don't quite get the idea now, but I think it could be it could be alright. So I just make one, two, three, four. Hmm. Such a beautiful morning. This morning at sunrise, I went and did laps in the pool. It was so freezing, but uh, it's just so great for the circulation. I try to tell Guido that he should try it because it's so, it's such a wonderful, healthy way to start your morning. And he has back trouble and swimming would help with that. But he doesn't doesn't uh, <laughs> feel tempted to to try it, but I just gosh, I just wake up in the mornings and after laps in the freezing pool and then a cold shower as well, I feel amazing and positive. It changes. It's like a chemical reaction in your in your brain. Ah, how beautiful. <gasps> my candles have arrived, my candles have arrived, and it's the coziest afternoon to light candles. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh my goodness, it's so cozy. <laughs> this is the coziest situation. There's thunder and lightning outside and before there was uh, light rain and uh, my candles just arrived from Ortigia. I love the brand Ortigia. This is not sponsored by them. I wish. I wish it were sponsored by them because their candles are a little bit expensive but it's such uh, a, a luxury. It's such a treat uh, that I sometimes treat myself to and also uh, the... Oh, do you, can you hear that thunder? So their scent that I often choose for the cooler months for soap and candles is Zagara, which is orange blossom. There's wood bases and it's very warm, rich citrus scent of Sicilian orange groves. This week I started off so full of enthusiasm and then I took quite a dive in my spirits because uh, this this bathroom bedroom, you know, our master bed bedroom and the ensuite has, I think I've been working on it for two years now. Two years, that's a long time in terms of the planning and the talking and debating about it with Guido and trying to get the, the, the tradesmen. What, what's been the holdup? Guido admitted to me, he said, oh, maybe he's been sort of resistant, but I just feel like once you've started a project, you have, I mean, we have to continue it. I've invested a lot in the, in the products and, and he's invested time in, 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 uh, in chasing down all the tradesmen. Guido's not such a fan of renovating. I mean, he doesn't get the same thrill as I do out of it. So he loves going into the garden and doing things, but any changes within the house, Oh my gosh, listen to that thunder. Any changes within the house, uh, he, he's quite begrudgingly having conversations about it all or I have to really get him in a really good mood in order to, to discuss or even check on what, 
what we can do, you know, in the, in, the, in the next week. So it's either in your character or it isn't. Either you're someone who loves renovating, clearly I am, <laughs> and, uh, and it's not... It's not Guido's thing. Although afterwards, after I've done all the, whether I've been painting tiles or, or how I redid all of the, the kitchen downstairs, that big, bigger kitchen that we now use every, we use it in summer and winter, we use it all the time and putting in the stuff and everything. All that work I did now, he says, oh my gosh, I just love it. This is, this is, we get so much more use out of this room. We didn't be used to use this room. So he's not, ungrateful in the sense that once everything's finished he loves it and he can't stop raving about it but he doesn't enjoy the process of renovating consequently I mostly do it on my own and and uh and I'm sort of the one always pushing it forward and and ordering things and and uh, and working on the the, the 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 parts that can be done by uh, a layman I guess and uh, and it frustrates me so much that I can't do it all because I love it when a project is just dependent on my stamina, my uh, investment in terms of you know buying the the, the, the materials uh, and, and my time, uh, because then I feel like I can see a project through. I can start it. I can finish it. I can organize my time uh, during the week and just say, right, if I want this this room to be transformed, I can do it. Uh, when I rely on uh, getting Guido's approval or uh, waiting on tradesmen uh, here in Italy, it, uh, it just, uh, I feel like my hands are tied and all I can do is, is be patient. So I began my week full of enthusiasm in my work clothes, ready to get my hands dirty. I put a sealer on the terracotta in the bathroom. Then I got the paint to paint the bedroom, uh, but Guido said best to sand back the places where the paint is peeling. So I thought, okay, I'll do a big morning of sanding. So I started on that, however, it's difficult to know where to stop because in some parts it broke away to the stone. So now this needs to be replastered. Then I thought, not to worry, I'll just work on the ceiling instead. but then half of the ceiling fell away between the beams. And now we have to wait for the builders to come to give a quote, then decide when they might be available to replaster everything with these old country houses that haven't been restored in 50 or some rooms 100 years. It's best to, to, to get this stuff done and then it will last, uh, hopefully, all of our, our lives if, if it's done well. But uh, sometimes it gets frustrating because I do have to beg Guido and the builders to keep things moving. Guido wants to start all these new projects in the garden, but I just want to finish one project before we go on to something new. And uh, this bedroom, I feel we've just been in this limbo state for two years and I'm so keen to get the master bedroom and ensuite finished before we move on to anything else. But you can't rush tradesmen here, so... I moved on to something I could do alone. I wanted to hide our toiletries on the shelves beside the sink, so I sewed some curtains using the leftover thick cream linen with which I upholstered the armchair in the nursery. And when it's raining, I'll take you home. I'll give you shelter and so much more.
pattering on the on the windows. It's just it's just the perfect situation to open this box, which I got from Ortigia. Oh, look! Here's, here's the first one. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's just heavenly. I remember I first came across them when I stayed at La Poste Vecchia, which is this the most beautiful hotel uh, just outside of Rome. And uh, it's in an old post office. It's like this. It's like, it looks like a beautiful villa by the sea. And um, and I remember in my suite they had this this Ortigia uh, hand soap, and I fell in love with it. And I thought, even when I was living in Italy, I, I, if I would go on a little mini vacation for work, I was staying in beautiful hotels and. And I would think, oh, I wish I could have a feeling of that luxury at home. And, and this was a way to bring that luxury into, into my home. And I got this, which is, oh, look, it's a glass soap um, dispenser. So it's um, refillable. And, oh, I, I just love it. But um, I thought for the new bathroom, uh, this would just look look at it it looks like a perfume bottle or something i mean i've never seen soap look so elegant i think that this is i like this um because it's just the pump soap so that you don't um you know you don't have to wash out the soap dish or anything uh and this color i think is so lovely and and uh, and and warm and 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 cozy for for winter it just looks like liquid gold doesn't it Ah. Brian, who knows my uh, love of Ortigia, also he, he loves them as well, and he got me this for my birthday, uh, which is oh, some beautiful bath salts and soap. And this is another of their scents that I just love, which is Fig of India. Look, look at this. Beautiful. I cannot, again, I've been waiting to saving these bath salts to use them for the first time that I use the bath in this bathroom. But they're just lovely even to, can you imagine that even to put on these shelves, which will <laughs> be cleared of all this mess and or even keep them in the corner on the bath as well. Fig of India, I really love uh, in summer. And then the Zagra, I love in, in winter. Fig of India is sort of a lighter scent. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes. I've bought the herbal garden. Oh, one of the herbs, yeah. Yeah, but it's, I've never bought it. It's in Corten. It's stained steel Corten. I thought it came already in, in, in a copper color, instead it's sort of steel color. That's okay. And then we'll get it old in months. Okay, perfect. Amazing. There you go. <laughs> it's so funny. You have endless enthusiasm for any project in the garden and in the house you're like, no. oh, <laughs> let's talk about it later. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know where to say wow. <laughs> Yeah, but so this is for making a a, a, a garden bed for the herbs outside yeah, the, uh, very, the... Very, very light. Very light. <laughs> 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 they give you also gloves. Yeah, because it cuts. Oh, really? <laughs> Look, cuties. <laughs> <laughs> so would you like some help with this? So the masking tape is where our bed will go. And we considered, this is the, the doorway, the entry to the bedroom will be here. We considered uh, my father building a, a built-in closet all along this wall here, uh, but it could just make the room feel a bit like you come in the, 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 the door and it's right there. It just felt a bit uh, overbearing uh, as uh, in terms of just like, having a big thing that comes all the way up to the ceiling. And so then I look, I brought this temporary clothes rack that my father made in here just to see, okay, 
This is the, uh, the basically the same size as a closet, a wardrobe we have downstairs in the guest room. And, uh, and just to see if perhaps I could cull my hanging stuff, my, most of my clothes. I like to have most of them hanging. And just if I could use this amount of space and, uh, and indeed I think I can. So I move them all downstairs into that wardrobe. And over here, we're going to block off this wall and then make this either into hanging space for Guido here. Uh, we can put the door back on and, and put some dowel up there or uh, make it into to shelves because Guido prefers shelves rather than hanging space. And then over on this wall here, we will put a chest of drawers uh, in between the two windows that Guido's um, can use as well. And then this I got for my office because this week I had a big clean up, tidy up of my office, which was a total disaster. My office is something which has been annoying me for months and it has been getting progressively worse. Uh, with all the delays in moving into our new bedroom, this room has become my wardrobe, a film equipment room, a junk room, an editing room. Uh, I'm storing some stuff for Gianfranco. The thing with renovations is you know, sometimes you think, well, I won't go to the trouble of tidying up and organizing things completely because this is just temporary. I'll do it all when each item has its designated place. But uh, I reached breaking point and felt so claustrophobic with my wardrobe over my editing desk. So while Guido was away uh, sleeping and working in Florence, I took everything out, uh, piled it all into the, the living room and suffered two days of severe hay fever as I cleaned all the dust and sorted everything into categories. I washed all my winter clothes, bought storage containers and folded away all my summer wardrobe. My father built this clothing stand for me as a temporary solution. It was right beside my editing desk. I moved it into the future bedroom to persuade Guido to talk about what we're going to do for wardrobe space and also to see for myself if I could fit it all into this length. A lovely old wardrobe that is in one of our guest rooms and we're hoping that we can get it upstairs. It's perfect because it's nice and tall, so it fits all of my dresses. And I was considering having my father make a custom built-in wardrobe, but it would take up a lot of room. And uh, and it's just uh, it's just not uh, not the same as having a a freestanding piece that has a bit of history, so this is it. I seem to have done it. I seem to, this is, I mean, I'm going to actually move my coats uh, down into, that we have a coat room, which I cleared out I, <laughs> many, many episodes ago, you might remember with my, with my parents. And uh, I'm going to treat myself to a big candle because I spend so much time, hang on, can you hear me if I pull this? I, I thought I spend so much time in front of my computer and I like to make my office feel less like an office and more like uh, a lounge room or, or day spa or a bedroom even. Uh, and so I, I, I love to do that by putting vases of fresh flowers and having lovely lamps and, and a rug and, and putting a beautiful luxury candle. Look at this. Oh my goodness, it's so big. This is the biggest candle I've ever owned. Anyway, I thought to myself, when I'm editing there, I, you know, I'm playing my music and I'm trying to create beauty for you. And I think it's important to have little, uh, little, little pieces of beauty in the room that can uh, inspire me. And I'm certainly inspired by, by candlelight. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Isn't it beautiful? That's a big candle. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on my desk. When it's when it's actually lit, it looks so beautiful because it just sort of glows through with this ah with these leopards and oh I love it. I love it so much. And look at this somebody, this is for the bathroom. No, no, it's it's um sapone. Sapone liquido, but it's like the, the, the 
the, uh, the jar is in glass rather than plastic. Yeah. And then this is a little candle. In fact, I wondered whether maybe this, this big candle could be good for having baths in the, uh, in the new bathroom when we finally do. But I've been holding off from having the, the, the first bath, even though technically I could. There's water, the bath's installed, but I'm just holding off until everything's finished so that we can have that celebratory first bath uh, when everything is finally finished. The problem with our clothes was driving me insane. Admittedly, I have a lot of clothes. I love clothes. They just always, uh, I find you can be so creative with clothing. I love just deciding what clothes you put on. And sometimes you might, you will not sometimes, most of the time in these videos, you just see uh, us here in the countryside, but we do go out. We do go out and see friends and, and we dress up and there's quite a, so a lot of the time when there's a party in, in Florence or a friend's place or something, it's in a villa and it's really, uh, a lot of the time Florentines dress up quite a lot. And uh, I tend not to film, which I sometimes I think, oh, it's a shame because Guido looks so handsome all dressed up in a suit and I, I dress in a, in a very elegant, uh, outfit and, and heels and it, it's fun to, to get so dressed up but I tend not to film because I it's something I've, I've started doing in the last few years or so I just I started thinking that I just don't like going somewhere and filming people who haven't consented to being filmed and so it's hard to give you an idea of a party uh, without showing inevitably showing people uh, in the in the scene. Uh, so I tend not to film when we go to people's houses for like a, a dinner, a lunch, a, a party, dancing. Uh, but it's a shame because then I'm like, oh, you you only ever see us around here and in the garden. And then uh, every now and then, obviously we're not we don't stay out super late. And it's been hard with Gianfranco, uh, with Gianfranco, but. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll often we'll take him and we go to lunches and we'll take him and and uh, and you know we get more more dressed up uh, than what I am just in my painting clothes around the house or Guido in his gardening clothes. Uh, so yes, all of that to say, we have a lot of clothes. Both of us, I have considerably more clothes as you would imagine, uh, and I just thought, right, how can I? cull this so that at least I have what I wear mostly during the week not for special occasions in our actual bedroom and then we have another room where I can go to for you know big coats and stuff that I would wear more in the city if I go into Florence or something like that so there's lots of storage in the bathroom there's a big cupboard so I thought I could keep underwear and and uh, perhaps sleepwear in there I've got lots of <clears throat> lots of space I could get some baskets and uh, and keep underwear and sleepwear in here um, and that way you could just get straight out of the bath um, get dressed into your pajamas and uh, and then walk into the bedroom in here do you prefer your stuff to be in drawers or hanging i prefer hanging because i know myself and if i'm trying things on sometimes i will uh, I'll always, I can put things back if they're on hangers, but if you have to fold them up, you have to get them out, uh, put them on, try them on, you get, and then you inevitably just sort of throw them on the bed and then mm, they can kind of just stay there. Uh, whereas I like uh, the hanging space also because you can see everything that you have and you don't have to rummage through a drawer or look in the, in the, in the back and where it's all dark. You can just sort of see it all laid out like a, like a boutique, like a, uh, like a store. And, uh, and it helps me decide what to wear when I'm, when I'm filming or when I'm going out. Uh, Guido, as you might have seen, wears a lot of the time just the same thing and he looks great and he doesn't need to change it up as much as I do. But I tend to, to wear, I like, I like wearing quite different things depending on the weather, depending on my mood. Sometimes if I'm making you a recipe, like I like to dress for the recipe. <laughs> so uh, I like to see all of my clothes. Uh, I uh, also wanted to get a space for all of my film equipment and somewhere where I could charge. I have microphones, I have you know, drone batteries, camera batteries, uh, lighting, everything. So I decided to uh, bring up this shelf that my father had been using for a uh, 
just to, to saw on. We've got to find something else. We're, we're working on something else for his workshop, which we'll be, we can talk about soon in another episode. But I found this bench, uh, which I then uh, cleaned up and uh, oiled down with some anti-woodworm uh, treatment so that we have a problem with uh, woodworm with any before any timber furniture comes into the house we have to put it with this um, anti tartlo this this anti woodworm uh, stuff and then I got it upstairs with the help of my parents and happily laid out all of my well not all of my gear but the gear I use every day because I am pretty much film every day uh, if there's something if there's a love nice light if we're eating something if there's you know collecting I collected pomegranates from the church garden the, the tree there is just so bountiful this year with with beautiful uh, pomegranates which I I, I I delighted in in noticing that it was sort of the same colors as the as the tiles you know that that crimson it's a red I don't know what it is but anyway it's the same color as the tiles that I've got in the bathroom and uh, I've been eating pomegranates every morning for breakfast with yogurt and walnuts so delicious so good for you um, and uh, anyway so I I laid out all my film equipment there I uh, got rid of all the clothes that were in these these drawers here uh, and and just sorted them into piles and packed them away in another storage room so that now I've got more space for my lighting that can go in here and other uh, film equipment that I don't use every day that can go in this one and uh, and then all my hard drives all my hard drives which is just so many because sometimes well, often I'll, I'll reference different episodes and I'll need to go back and find you know May 2022 especially for renovation projects when I'm trying to show you <laughs> like the progression and I think ah when was like for example with this bathroom I was thinking about oh gosh what, what where's the footage from when we knocked down the wall um, so I've got all my hard drives in this big drawer up here I mean then I had I had baby stuff in here I had stuff for Gianfranco so it was just a little bit of a nightmare. Also, I'm 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 largely to blame because I just needed to get on top of it sooner. And I I have even once we got Joe Franco sleeping, then he you know got sick and then he was teething, and so I've still been up throughout the night. So it's it's been a full on year for me of of, of sleep deprivation. And I I think that whenever I wake up and I find that I'm I've got some energy. I'll throw myself into editing or or, or filming, or cooking and filming, rather than tidying up this room. But that is all sorted now. I took away everything. I had to wear a mask because I had such hay fever. My eyes were streaming. That's why I didn't film any of me because I looked such a mess. I was just crying all fit for two days straight while I was going through all this stuff and all the dust. And uh, I did it while Guido was away. Uh, sleeping overnight in Florence so that he wasn't uh, witness to all of this this disaster zone. Then uh, the desk that I used was uh, his his father's Guido's father's desk. So I hadn't gone through that because I didn't want to disturb any of the, the drawers. But then I thought, you know what, it's it's time to just go through it all. And uh, there were just so many old bullets, uh, shooting bullets, and uh, different bills and things like this. So. I uh, and keys so many keys and so I uh, just went through all the eight drawers which is crazy because I was just sitting there with this desk needing all this room to put stuff and and having all these eight drawers which were some of them just had rubbish in them from from like 1952 you know so uh, uh, so I, obviously not, none of that was thrown out I just put it all into different little categories keys bullets bills from 1952 and uh, and then uh, and put it away uh, and now cleaned out all the drawers and now ah oh, I've got all I've got so much more space which is quite uh, exciting then as I was cleaning I was just uh, taking away some of the paintings that I, I wanted to put up some paintings that were more me and uh, and I I discovered something very mysterious and oh my gosh I let me just show you let me show you because I was filming when I discovered it. So much stuff that just got piled in here during the renovations and now it is a mess. Oh my gosh, I'm embarrassed to even show you. Then there are these paintings which 
I think we're going to move somewhere else. I want to put up some of my stuff, so we might... Oh. Oh my god. Oh my... What is this? Is it a safe? Oh my... Oh my gosh. What is this? Is it a safe? Is it just like a, a... But it's... How do you open it? Oh my gosh, it's so mysterious and beautiful. I just... Who would have known that it was here? How does it open? Oh my gosh. There's got to be something inside there, no? I wonder if the other one has. No. Okay. Look what I discovered behind a painting. <laughs> what? Have you I seen knew, it? I knew it. Oh, you knew it? We oh, don't no. know where the key is. What do you mean you don't know where the key is? We There's no know. keyhole. We don't know where the key is. No! What? 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 Oh my gosh, that's so cool. And well, you don't have the key? No. But you have to try, no? Come on, they were, all the keys that were in there, we tried them all. No. We never managed to find the right key. Of course, I'm sure a lot of you will be saying in the comments, get a locksmith, <laughs> which uh, I suppose we, we can do. Uh, can locksmiths just open any key in the world, even if it's something that looks like it's from we're in Renaissance times. <laughs> uh, maybe they can. Anyway, it's, it, will be, it will be interesting to see. I mean, Guido doesn't think there's anything in there, but you never know. Um, so that was quite a discovery for me, uh, anyway. And, uh, and now I'm looking forward to putting some more art uh, that I, pieces that I have collected uh, up on the walls so that it feels more like me. One piece that I got, which I can't remember if I talked to you about it. I bought it at Christmas. Was it two Christmases ago? Wow, yeah, it would have been two years ago. Uh, it, in my head thinking, oh, one day I will get the office sorted and I will have a space of my own to really put up the things that I like. And uh, I found this in a little uh, antique store and I just love, loved it. And, and uh, it's, um, yeah, I think it, it gives me a lot of peace when I'm, sit and look at it across from my from my desk and then I, uh, I took one of the standing lamps which I actually got from that same secondhand store that secondhand antique store and it was the one with the lovely brass feet and uh, we weren't using all the lamps that I um, got for the for the sitting room downstairs so move that up here and I think it just because you see because of this this ceiling it's got a, a, a that lovely vaulted ceiling um, it, uh, it doesn't have a ceiling light, so I rely on lamp light to, to give it some light, which actually I really love, especially in winter, it makes it feel so cosy. Then I put a rug down, put some vases of flowers around, and yeah, it's looking a lot better. Tidy, cosy, and uh, inviting. We
as soon as there is just even a hint of cloud cover, I instantly think ah, cookies, uh, cakes, uh, apple crumble. Uh, I just want to, to bake all those lovely, uh, lovely comfort foods. So uh, the other, the other last night actually, I um, I just whipped up some chocolate chip cookies. You know how my recipe is to leave overnight, and what I did is actually just in case you're making it. Um, I added another half cup, I think I said two and a half cups of flour, but I added three cups of flour um, just because when I leave overnight, everything, the, the, um, the, the flour really absorbs all the moisture. Uh, but because I was just, I was just leaving them for two hours. So I wanted to cook them a lot sooner. So I added another half cup of flour just in case you're making it. So that's one that I do with browned butter and, uh, and cinnamon and Mm, they were so delicious, so delicious. Thank you for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you did, just stop the video now, give it a little like, uh, press that little subscribe button. It will make me so happy. Thank you very much to the viewers who donate to this channel on Patreon. Uh, it's it's such a, a lovely thing to see your names. I copy and paste them out every every week and I look at your names and I think oh wow that person's uh, here again this month and it's um, really warms my heart and, and, and encourages me uh, like you have no idea so thank you very much to those viewers who are patrons. Have a really cozy weekend wherever you are in the world and I will see you next episode. A la próxima.